bleef met een botkenker Ewing herkomen. Vrij zeldzaam, maar bijzonder agressief. Brute pig. Rupert Supli is the enthusiastic animator of all events and parties of his non-profit organization Hope. All proceeds from the organized events go to the research fund that bears his name. Body cells continuously divide and grow, but if they divide incorrectly or uncontrolled, cancer cells with anomalous shapes occur and rapidly divide. Now a tumor is created. Cancer cells carry molecules on their surface that are recognized by our immune system. These tumor antigens are ingested by the antigen-presenting cells, the team coaches of the immune system. These specific white blood cells present the adapted cancer antigens to other white blood cells. Together, they form the immunological team. APCs activate T cells. When these powerful cancer killers have been activated, they multiply and track the cancer cells. APCs also recruit natural killer cells. Now the immunological team can track cancer cells and eliminate them. But destroying all cancer cells is not always as successful as hoped. When the opponents are equal in strength, an equilibrium is reached, whereby the tumor can be contained but not eliminated. Tumors are intelligent and often mutate and change. This allows cancer cells to escape and spread throughout the body. Immunotherapy tips the scales back in favor of the immune system, powering it with a personal cancer vaccine to eliminate or control the cancer. Research on cells that play a leading role in our immune system at the CCRG led to a breakthrough in the post-consolidation treatment of leukemia patients. In February 2015, these clean rooms were part of the very first and exclusive Belgian Academic Cell Therapy Centre, certified for good manufacturing practices for the production of cell vaccines and limbal epithelial cells. Nu wordt het echt spannend, want jullie gaan nu zien hoe een echt kankervaccin gemaakt wordt. Dus kom, we zijn weg. Rupert's cancer vaccine is made with immune cells from his own blood. The collection of the blood cells is done via a process called apheresis. Two infusion catheters are placed, one in each arm. Through the first tube, blood flows into a centrifuge in which a specific form of white blood cells, monocytes, are separated from the rest of the blood. The patient receives the majority of the blood back through the infusion in the other arm. From this moment on, Rupert is not allowed to move his arms. Tijdens de aferese kan het zijn dat je gewaar wordt dat je tintelingen aan je lippen of aan je neus krijgt. Dat is niet erg, maar dat gaat niet over. Hè. Dat blijft ofwel stabiel ofwel wordt dat erger. Maar je moet het zeker zeggen, dat komt doordat je citraat krijgt. Een citraat dat breekt eigenlijk calcium af in je lichaam en dat geeft aan die reactie. Er is totaal niks voor je zorgen over te maken, we geven gewoon een beetje calcium bij dan en dan gaat dat overgaan. The filtered blood is collected in a small compartment in the centrifuge.
When the compartment is full, the filtering stops and the blood cells are transferred to the blood bag. Then the filtering starts again and the new compartment is filled. The whole procedure of filtering and transferring to the blood bag takes about 4 to 5 hours. During this period, 12 to 15 liters of blood will have been filtered in the device. After 5 hours of lying still in the same position, the end is near. Finally, the needles are removed and that is a giant relief. The blood bag receives the necessary identification stickers and is collected for the transportation to the clean rooms. Now the blood bag has arrived in a clean room at the CCRG. Here the preparation of the vaccine begins. Everybody who enters the clean room area has to register and put on sterile clothes. The monocytes are now prepared for the culturing phase to become dendritic cells, a superior form of antigen-presenting cells. But still there is a long way to go. Firstly, the collected blood cells are transferred to a special bag in which the manipulations can be safely performed. Because only monocytes are necessary for the preparation of dendritic cells, today there are several steps to take for the clearing of the red blood cells, platelets and other white blood cells, of course, without losing the monocytes. In this special work area called the left cabinet, microbeads that will bind to the protein on the monocyte's membrane are added. Also, extra air is added to get a more efficient binding. To be sure that all cells have contact with the magnetic beads, the bag is put on a mixing plate for 15 minutes. Again, the blood is purified to avoid unwanted bindings. Afterwards, the bag is centrifuged again for 30 minutes. This is the perfect amount of time to check all lot numbers. This is the last step in the purifying process. In this device, monocytes are separated magnetically from all other cells. Via the filter, the air chamber and the optic sensor, at last the magnetic unit is reached. Here the monocytes can be taken from the blood while all other cells pass into a waste bag. Nu hebben we die monocyten, dan zijn we toe aan een volgende fase in de bereiding. Deze bestaat uit twee stappen. In de eerste stap gaan we die monocyten laten uitrijpen tot dendritische cellen. Dat doen we door deze monocyten met rijpingstoffen in kweekflessen te plaatsen in de broedstof. En in de tweede stap gaan we dan die dendritische cellen nog verder laten uitrijpen tot actieve dendritische cellen. En actieve dendritische cellen, dat zijn cellen die goed in staat zijn om T-cellen en natuurlijke killercellen te activeren. 
These clean rooms, where monocytes will be transformed into powerful dendritic cells, are super sterile. Here, strict air control and cleaning rules apply. Dus we hebben drie soorten um, emmers. De blauwe emmer voor het neutraal detergent, de witte emmer voor het water en de rode emmer voor de biocide C. Dat is voor de wekelijkse en de drie maandelijkse kuis. Dan hebben we ook nog een systeem voor dagelijkse reiniging en dat is een afwisseling van voorgedrenkte doeken biocide A en biocide B. Of course, sterile clothing is required. Clothing changes are completed on a special free colored floor. Because this has to be done in the right order and the right colored box, it's clear that all cell and tissue technologists have to be physically fit and very attentive. Charlotte has considerable experience. She is able to do it pretty fast. But even then, at least 15 minutes are needed to change clothes. Now, Rupert's monocytes are transferred from the back into tubes. After a short spin in the centrifuge, the cells are at the bottom of the tube and the supernatant can be removed. Now the cells are rinsed thoroughly and transferred into flasks with a red growth medium. The cells are feeling comfortable in this growth liquid and are transferred to culture flasks where they will grow into dendritic cells. The dendritic cells are cultured in the incubator. Culturing takes eight days, but on the third and sixth day, the culture flasks are taken out of the incubator for a short period to be given extra ripening agents.
This is Harvest Day. After firmly wrapping, the cells are rinsed thoroughly, washed, transferred into tubes and promptly put in the centrifuge to remove the supernatant. Then the major dendritic cells are divided into small cuvettes ready for a new manipulation. In the following phase, gaan we de dendritische cellen laden met delen van een kankereiwit, zodat die T-cellen gaan activeren die specifiek die kankercellen kunnen herkennen en aanvallen. After adding the cancer protein, the cells receive a short electric shock. For a moment, poles form on the cell membrane, and so the cancer protein can enter. 300 volts. This certainly does not feel good. Therefore, the cells are taken out of the cuvettes as fast as possible and placed back in growth medium. Afterwards, they are transferred to a six-well plate. The electrically shocked cells are left to recover for two hours in the incubator before a new series of manipulations follows. Na controle vriezen we verschillende porties van het dendritische celvaccin in, zodat we minstens vier keer een vaccin aan de patiënt kunnen toedienen. In a vial with freezing liquid and labeled with Rupert's name, the cells leave the green room, safely stored in a cryo box to be put in the minus 80 degree freezers. The cryo box takes care of the gradual cooling to minus 80 degrees with one degree per minute. The cells will stay here for one day. At last, the frozen cells will be transferred to the liquid nitrogen tank. And that is easier said than done. In general, the cells could survive here for years, but for no, this will be a short quarantine. It is now three weeks later, and today Rupert receives his personalized cancer vaccine for the first time. At the CCRG, preparation of the vaccine has been started early in the morning. The thought cells are rinsed and centrifuged because the freezing liquid needs to be removed as soon as possible. The plate with cells and new ripening fluids goes back in the incubator for two hours. Then a new harvest is rinsed with saline fluid. 
This is repeated three times until the cells are in sodium chloride alone. To exclude any form of contamination, the supernatant will be checked again. Now the vaccine is ready and a syringe is filled with approximately 10 million dendritic cells. These are the super professional coaches that will give instructions to Rupert's own immune system, the T cells and the natural killer cells that need to find and kill the cancer cells. The vaccine leaves the clean rooms in a transport box for the Oncology and Hematology Day Clinic. Here the box is transferred to the doctor, who, after reviewing the documents, will administer the vaccine. Rupert, dan ga ik eerst ontsmetten, de huid, en dan daarna gaan we met dit spaatje en naald een aantal papels maken, waar dat eigenlijk het vaccin dat hierin zit rustig in de lymfeklierregio ingespoten wordt. Dat is een beetje koud. Eerst de En dan het tweede. Rupert krijgt nu gedurende enkele maanden, om de twee weken, zijn eigen dendritische celvaccin ingespoten. In de oksel, nabij de lymfeklieren, want het is daar dat het afweersysteem op gang gebracht wordt. Zo hopen we dat nu de klassieke chemokuur voorbij is, hij niet hervalt of minstens langer kankervrij blijft. Immunotherapy is using your own highly educated immune cells in the battle against cancer. The patient receives an extra chance. It's a promising therapy filled with hope, a way forward in cancer research. Lots and lots of research needs to be done because so much still needs to be learned.